Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Calculus Nation. My name is Secret Agent Nick Snow Calculus. I'm the founder and the director of the Calculus Industry Spy Network and the Calculus Nation. So, you've just installed Linux Mint for the first time. You've installed the operating system, whether it be the Debian edition or 21.3 Cinnamon. This is 21.3 Virginia, the latest version. Now, if you do want to get a couple of things set up, well, here's what you'll want to do in order to get Mint set up for multimedia and gaming purposes. Now, first things first, you'll want to type in sudo apt update. You will need the command line to do this, but just follow along with me, you should be okay. Double ampersand, which means after this is done, then do sudo, if I can do this right, apt upgrade. We will use the dash y flag, which means assume yes. Now, my machine is already up to date, so I don't need to do this, but enter in your password and then let the update do its thing. It will take specifically from etc right here, etc apt sources.list.d and then whatever is in that directory, it's going to be these .list files. It'll have a URL which will ping that specific package repository and say, hey, do you have a newer version available? If it does, well, sudo apt upgrade will go ahead and upgrade that specific package. Now, what I have set here, I'm in Vim. This line right over here, this is line three. I have the Fastly CDN set up. Now, this is experimental at this time. So keep that in mind. You'll probably end up using packages.linuxmint.com instead of fastly.linuxmint.io. If Fastly CDN gets implemented, which is based in Chicago, by the way, they will go ahead and do fastly.linuxmint.com. But right now it's linuxmint.io. This is in beta and they're testing it right now. But I also did Virginia, which is the current version of Mint, followed by main, upstream import and backport, basically the same thing as with line one. So that said, let's get out of that. After this is done, I will be referencing my Mint 21 cinnamon guide. You will want to go into the Ultimate Linux Gaming Guide as written by Chris Titus almost four years ago now. It is insanity how long this has been. Now, first things first, we will go ahead I'm actually going to bring the terminal over here. I am using i3 window manager. You may be using cinnamon, so you'll probably have everything into one window. That should be fine. We will go ahead and do sudo dpkg, and then we'll add the architecture. If I can actually spell. And then i386. i386 is essentially the 32-bit repositories. I've already added i386, so I should be fine there. We'll go ahead and add just that. If you are using an AMD GPU, you'll probably want to get the Mesa drivers, but you may want to use a different tutorial for that because this is probably out of date. If you are on Nvidia, however, do not use this installer. It's not going to work very well, and it'll probably be only the 495 as you can see there. No. Instead, go ahead and use a little something called the driver manager. Yes, that's a thing. We'll go ahead and place it over here. In the driver manager, you want to use the latest version of the NVIDIA proprietary drivers. In my case, I have an RTX 3060 LHR or light hash rate. Yes, it is my Zotac model. Now, we have the 545 drivers of which I personally have selected go ahead and do the latest version of the drivers. If that doesn't work, go ahead and do the 535s or whatever is recommended. Before you do anything else, you need to go ahead and make a backup using timeshift. We'll do sudo timeshift gtk, or you can select timeshift from the cinnamon menu, assuming you're using cinnamon or xvice or mate. If you are on a window manager like I am, I will just type in 
Timeshift GTK. And then set up Timeshift, get a backup made. Make a backup. Once that's done, go ahead and do that. Go ahead and get the drivers necessary. I have the 545 drivers, but I wouldn't mind doing the 550 drivers or later in order to get Wayland support. And so I could also use Sway. Sway is basically the Wayland version of i3, for those wondering. Now, we will go ahead and go to the custom Linux kernel. If you want a kernel recommendation from yours truly, go ahead and get the Licorix kernel since it's Debian based. You'll probably want this one over here, this command in the Ubuntu based prerequisite, if you want to grab it on Ubuntu. If not, you can basically use the Debian prerequisite if you're using LMDE. And then you'll do a 64-bit install. All, all of these are not necessary. And I wouldn't do mainline either. Mainline is more of a, I guess, a, a later kernel with more support and whatnot. I think if I do uname, I'll do uname-a. I'm on the 6.7 Licrix kernel. I'm not even in 6.8, but it is a newer kernel. What was I just doing? Anyway, if you are on the Mesa drivers, if you're on AMD, you could consider this ACO, which is essentially a way to increase performance and it will be much faster. And this is from the time, I'm sure things have gotten much better for Linux gaming since. I've been gaming on Linux for four years now. Yes, I've been gaming on Linux for almost four years. So I kind of know a thing or two about it. I have been using Linux for a long time, but I may be part of the long time users. Now, when we get to this wine thing here, we will go ahead and go to the Ubuntu repository for wine. These are the wine packages. They are several versions behind though. You could go ahead and add the repository. So just grab these commands one by one, control C, go into your terminal of choice. Most likely for you in a fresh install of Mint, you'll probably end up doing, I think the GNOME terminal. In my case, I'm using Alacrity, control shift and V in order to do that. We should be good on that front. Then get the wine key inside of the key rings. So you're making ETC APT key rings. You're making a specific key ring repository inside of apt. And then you're going to add the wine key. It's basically the wine HQ key from the wine HQ guys themselves. Now you won't be using the noble or the mantic uh, list here, you'll go ahead and do this one for Jammy in particular. And the W git command that you'll want to grab. This is obviously for Linux Mint 21, of which I assume you got Linux Mint 21. If you're on Linux Mint 20 or Ubuntu 2004, go ahead and use this one for Focal. And then of course you'll do sudo apt update. But wait, you may be asking. I've already updated my system. Why do I need to do this again? You need to update the package information so that way apt can realize, oh, there is a new list in sources.list.d. Once that specific package can be updated, you'll be able to use that specific repository as is in apt. And then once you install line, go ahead and get the staging branch of which I use. Control C that. I get that. Control Shift and V. There we go. And you'll want to get the recommended things for Wine as well. And the Wine HQ Wiki will basically explain things a little bit. For the staging branches, this is the third branch. Several hundred experimental patches that are not yet ready for inclusion in the main branch. It's recommended for users of applications, games affected by bugs, marked staged. Hmm. Yeah. So basically, this has a lot of different things inside of that branch. I use the staging branch, but that's just personally me. And I believe 
this is also required. I think it'll be the staging branch. Yes, it'll be a one HQ staging that he recommends, but that's fine. This is again, Titus's guide. Next, we'll need to do this U limit dot HN. That's not a dot. If we do that, it should return more than 500,000. If it does, specifically, you may do 524,288. If the no file is more than 500,000, you have eSync. Next is the game mode daemon. Now, I do not have the game mode daemon to the latest version. There's the game mode D, the game mode daemon. I'm on version 1.8.1. I actually did get it from the GitHub repository that Far Interactive has, and I did build it myself. If, however, you want to grab game mode D, you could do the game mode daemon, but it'll be version 1.6.1. So I would not recommend that specific build. You'll want to grab it from the Feral Interactive guys as best as possible, especially if you want the latest version. Now, if you're unable to do that for whatever reason, follow the documentation on how to get game mode. Follow the dependencies. Now, there are many ways to do this. And if you're on GNOME, you could even install this extension here, which is probably not gonna work very well to use the game mode daemon. And it doesn't work on 100% of Steam games anyways. It does work on other games though, that are not Steam. Now, if you do want to use the custom Proton, I would not recommend this. And you cannot use Steam in the Flatpak. That's a big problem. A lot of beginners will make the mistake of using Steam in a Flatpak. Unless you're willing to use Proton GE, the Flatpak version of that, you're going to have to go ahead and get the .dev. There's a native package already for Linux anyway. There, there's an Ubuntu package already. So there's that. Instead, I will look for a little project called Proton Up Cute. I have mentioned this a couple of times on the channel, but this is the way I personally get Proton GE. It's a graphical interface in order to grab the latest versions of Proton, any version. I personally use the Glorious Eggroll build made by Thomas Kreider. Yes, he goes by Glorious Eggroll. He's very well respected in the Linux gaming community, mainly because he is one of the developers of Lutris and is even an engineer at Red Hat. Specifically, I think in the Fedora division. I'm not entirely sure. But it does indeed have flat pack capabilities, but you may want to go ahead and have Fuse installed on the system. I don't know if it's going to be Fuse 2 or regular Fuse. Get Fuse 2 just in case. And you'll also want to get something called the Abbott Image Launcher, or if you want to be using something that's more active, you could use Appman, which I hadn't heard of much, but the next operating system I install, whether it be, well, Mint or something else, I'm gonna try Appman and see how that's going to go. But now you may be asking, since you've got all that set up, you'll probably be asking how you secure Linux. I'm gonna go ahead and look for a specific web page there's this secure Linux thing here. It's some sort of script, I believe. There's a jail.local, secure.sh, so I think it's this one. Yes, it is. I believe I actually have that. I called it TI Harden. I will use Vim on this thing, but you can use whatever text editor you want. Then I will go ahead and do T TI Harden. It's basically the same thing. Here you set up rules for the uncomplicated firewall or UFW, you will need that. It's installed on default on Mint, but you need fail to ban. And then there's a specific jail.local, which is this one right here. And that's basically what you need to do here. So it's fine. That's basically how this works. Here, uh, sysctl.conf, you have all of these things to harden your kernel. This is a kernel hardening process. Here, you can go ahead and prevent IP spoofing. This is the method you can use for that. 
And then this is how you enable fail to ban after you get everything done. And then go ahead and do a net stat. This is essentially going to secure your Linux machine, but there's way more to that. So we will be testing for what is called Drova Rub, which is a pretty bad, yeah, it's essentially a SQL hack of some sort. So it looks like Drova Rub is a botnet of some sort. It's a Russian botnet. Now we will go ahead and that should be fine. We'll go ahead and make a test file and then we are going to echo set test file. But before we do anything else, I will go ahead and open up PC man FM, which is my file manager of choice. The test file should be, where is it? The test file is down here. Now I will go ahead and hit enter. Okay. We do not have driver rub. If the test file disappears, you can go ahead and basically assume you have driver up virus, but if not, then you're safe. Now they also recommend secure boot. I don't use secure boot. Linux doesn't really need it. And secure boot can actually cause some problems. In my case, in one game that I play, it does freeze according to secure boot and TPM. So I've just turned that stuff off. So we should be good on that front. Now, you may be wondering, Nixendoig, you're using a window manager, something I don't understand. How do I go ahead and do the same things you do? I believe linked below, if I actually remember to send it over to my editor, I went ahead and made a tutorial on how to install i3 with Bumblebee status. Here I'm just using regular i3 blocks. I believe that's going to be it for this tutorial though, but you should have gaming fine and dandy. One more thing before we go, you'll probably want to do sudo apt install steam installer, learn how to get Lutris from the GitHub repository. It's a dot depth that you'll want to grab. And for itch, you'll want to learn the instruction on, on how to get that. If you want to get some gaming done. There are also a plethora of games that are already natively compiled for Ubuntu 22.04, even though some of them may not be necessarily great. But that being said, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you and good night.